At some point in your life, probably early on, you might have attempted to dig a hole to China. You might have even made it part of the way, maybe three or four feet, depending on the type of sand at your beach. But now you're older and more persistent, so let's say on your next trip to the ocean you succeed, where you previously failed and dig a hole all the way through the planet, all 8,000 miles, and then you jump in. What would happen? First, it depends on where you begin digging. Exactly where you start is important. The belief that China is on the other side of America is actually incorrect. In truth, if you started your hole anywhere in the continental United States, you'd end up drowning in the Indian Ocean. To start your hole in the United States and emerge on dry land, you would need to begin on a beach in Hawaii, where after digging, you would surface in Botswana to get there. But starting in Hawaii has its own problems. The outside of our planet is spinning much faster than the inside of it, just like a merry-go-round. Standing on a Hawaiian beach, you'd be traveling 800 miles per hour faster than the core. As a result, when you jumped into your hole, you would grind against the front edge of the wall on your way down and then against the back wall on your way up. At slow speeds, this grinding would leave no more than a light road rash. But at higher speeds, a continuous road rash and free fall would sand down your skin and bones until you were nothing more than falling free. The smartest way to avoid the sand to death problem is to begin digging your dig at one of the poles, where the surface of the planet is spinning at the same speed as the core. That's step one. But death by road rash is not the only reason jumping into a hole through the earth is risky. The terminal velocity of a falling human body in pike position at sea level is roughly 200 miles per hour. At that speed, it would take 40 hours to fall 8,000 miles. In other words, depending on connections, you could book a flight to Botswana and beat yourself there the regular way. But let's assume you're not in a hurry and 40 hours is okay. You still would not make it all the way through. Within a few seconds, you would start slowing down for two reasons. First, as you came closer to the center of the planet, there would be less Earth to pull you down, meaning you would actually start weighing less and falling more slowly. But the second, more dangerous issue is the thickness of the air. Mount Everest is the highest point on Earth at 29,000 feet. At this elevation, there's less atmosphere, atmosphere above you, compressing the air, and as a result, the surface air is so thin, only the well-trained can survive in it. The opposite effect happens when you go in the opposite direction. As more atmosphere is added above you, it compresses the air you're falling into. After falling only 60 miles, less than 1% of the way, the air would be as dense as water. For a while, you would sink, but eventually you would reach a point of equilibrium where the air would be as dense as you were. So there you would stay floating inside Earth for all eternity. Obviously, we need to make a design change to your sand pit. The solution to the air density problem is to suck all the air out of your tunnel, seal it off, and make a long vacuum tube. That solved both the floating problem and the slow travel time, because now you'd be screaming past the center of the Earth at 18,000 miles per hour instead of getting stuck only part way. Unfortunately, your tunnel still wouldn't be safe to use, because as the Russians proved when they dug the world's greatest sand hole, the inside of the Earth has a heat problem. The Russian sand pit is called the Kola Super Deep Borehole. It's the result of a massive 22-year project that began in 1970 for no other reason than to see how deep they could dig. The Soviets made it 40,000 feet in 1989 before extreme heat melted the soldering, the soldering on their drill and shut the project down. Even though they dug less than 0.1% of the planet, the temperature reached 356 degrees. The rule of thumb is that for every 100 feet below the surface you dig, the Earth heats up 1 degree, which means that after falling for 2 seconds, you would be roughly 1 degree warmer. Not a big deal, but in your new vacuum tube, you would be accelerating rapidly. After three seconds, your tunnel would be three degrees warmer, and after 30 seconds, it would be as hot as an oven. It would not be comfortable, but you would survive for a surprisingly long time. In the 18th century, the Englishman Sir Charles Blagden heated up a room to 221 degrees, sat in it for 15 minutes, and walked out unharmed. But Sir Blagden wasn't in a room that kept getting warmer, unlike your tunnel. After 30 seconds, you might still be alive, but the hole would continue to heat up. After another 30 seconds, you would have gone 13 miles and the temperature would have reached 1,000 degrees. If you brought a take and bake pizza with you, it would be ready to eat and so would you. But it gets worse. Not even your body would make it to the other side. The center of the Earth reaches 11,000 degrees, hotter than the surface of the sun. At that temperature, your body would instantly vaporize, which means your electrons would be ripped from your atoms and the only thing left of you would be falling bits of plasma. 
So we need to make another design change on your tunnel. We'd need to insulate it in a very, very impossibly well. Would you make it? Assuming you didn't hit the sides of the tunnel, which would slow you down and leave you short of the other side, you would reach the center of the earth in just over 19 minutes and be falling at 18,000 miles per hour. Once you pass the center, you would begin slowing more and more as the planet began pulling you back. But just like on a playground swing, your own momentum would carry you back to the same height at which you started. In this case, the other side of the earth. So if you ignore the impossibility with current technology of digging a hole in the extreme temperatures and pressures of the earth's core, would you make it to the other side? Actually, yes. Approximately 38 minutes and 11 seconds later, you would reach the other side of the globe. Just make sure to grab the surface when you get there. Miss, and you would start the whole process over again.